Okay, today we're going to talk about this really, really interesting problem. And it asks to find all real polynomials, p of x. That means polynomials with real coefficients. So that p of p of x is actually equal to p of x raised to the 2021. Now, the 2021 here is actually a red herring, meaning that you could replace it with any positive integer n, and you'll be able to find a solution to this problem using the same processes. So to get us started, what I want to do is actually start with a lemma. And this lemma will allow us to learn something about polynomials in general. So say we had p of x and q of x polynomials. And we knew that they shared infinitely many values when infinitely many values are plugged in. Meaning p of a is q of a for infinitely many a. Okay, so it'll turn out then that a consequence of this is that the polynomials p of x and q of x are actually identically equal themselves. So here, when we say p of x is equal to q of x, we mean as polynomials. Okay, so if two polynomials share the same value at infinitely many values you plug in, then they must have been the same polynomials to begin with. And the proof of this relies on the following fact. If you have a polynomial that has infinitely many roots, then it can only be the zero polynomial. So the reason why is because if you have a polynomial of degree n, then it can only have at most n roots. And so the polynomial would have to be constant if it had infinitely many roots. Now, the zero polynomial is the only constant polynomial that has roots. Every other constant polynomial doesn't have roots at all. Okay, we're going to construct the zero polynomial in an interesting way here. We'll let f of x be the polynomial q of x subtracted from p of x. Right, then, for all these values a that we have, f of a is going to be p of a minus q of a. And that's zero for infinitely many a. Okay, so that means then that f itself is a zero polynomial. And if f is a zero polynomial, that means that the two polynomials, p of x and q of x, are actually identically the same. Okay, great. So now we have these two polynomials that are exactly the same. Let's see why that actually helps us in determining all solutions to our particular equation of interest. And one thing I want to notice about this is that we're going to be using the fact that p of x is a genuine polynomial, but we should rule out the case when p of x is a constant polynomial first. So let's actually take a look at that. Okay, so let's say p of x was a constant polynomial, say the constant k. Okay, then this left-hand side here would be a constant polynomial evaluated at itself, and that's a constant, so it would be k whereas the right-hand side will be k to the 2021. So keeping care with things, let's move the k over to the right-hand side. We'll get k to the 2021 minus k is 0. And we can factor the k out to get k times k to the 2020 minus 1. All right, so this is 0 where k is a constant, so that means k is either 0 or this quantity right over here is 0, and since 2020 is an even number, that means k can be either positive or negative 1. So there are constant polynomials that satisfy this. There's the 0 polynomial, the polynomial that is just identically 1, and the polynomial that's identically negative 1. So that takes care of all the cases where p of x is constant. Let's see what happens when p of x is not constant. So if p of x is not constant, then we can find two values, a and b, that are different, so that p of a and p of b are different as well. Now, without loss of generality, we can assume that one of these values is strictly less than the other. Otherwise, we can relabel a and b and make p of a less than p of b. So we'll say that p of a is less than p of b. So what's the picture behind what's actually happening here? So you have a polynomial at a specific value a, 
its function value is p of a. And at a different value b, its function value is p of b. Okay, so then what happens here is we have different values and the function is a polynomial, so it's actually a continuous function. So its curve will look something like this, which means then if we pick any value c, in between p of a and p of b, there's going to be a value y, so that p of y is equal to c. And the reason this happens is because of the intermediate value theorem. So we'll write down, for every c in the open interval between p of a and p of b, there's a y, so that p of y is exactly this value c. All right, so the interesting part about this is what happens when we plug in y into our original equation that p of x satisfies. Okay, if we do that, we have p of p of y is equal to p of y all raised to the 2021. Okay, the left-hand side here is actually p of c, and the right-hand side here is c raised to the 2021. So now we actually have infinitely many values of c that satisfy this equation right over here. And the reason is there's infinitely many choices of c in this interval right over here. So if we let q of x be the polynomial x to the 2021, then q of x and p of x share infinitely many values in common for infinitely many values of x when we plug in x equals c. By our lemma earlier, that means that these two polynomials are actually completely identical. So p of x is actually the polynomial x to the 2021. Now, what's remarkable about this is that it's the only non-constant polynomial that satisfies this. And we can actually plug it right in to this expression to verify that that actually will be the case. Both of them, both of the two sides that we have will be x raised to the 2001 squared. So a cool problem that uses different parts of math, one, understanding that polynomials can only have finitely many roots, and another, the intermediate value theorem.